Well, welcome back to Action Church, and we are choosing our adventure this morning. I honestly don't know how the service is going to end, so I'm excited to see how you choose. But before we do that, I want to remind you a couple of things that we've been talking about, and I guess the most exciting thing that I could tell you from ancient scripture, and I believe just backed up by life, is that there is more than one ending to your life story. I mean, that's a pretty big deal if you think about it because all of us at some point in our life are going to have one of those choose your own adventure moments. Now, maybe you'll realize it at the time. Maybe you'll go, ooh, I've got to choose between taking this promotion and moving to another city or I've got to choose whether to accept this proposal or, or walk away or I've got to choose something and sometimes it's very sort of cut and dry and we, we know, but other times... You're just sort of walking through life and you're doing your routine and you're getting up in the morning and making breakfast for the kids or going to your job and one day, you know, you get that notice from the factory or you get that notice from your significant other or wife or husband or something happens and all of a sudden you have a moment in life where not only do you get to make a decision, but the decision that you make will affect the rest of your decisions. I was talking to someone in the lobby this morning, kind of telling them about our story of moving out to the East Coast. I'm from the middle of the country. I'm from Southeast Missouri, sort of sort of the weird part of Missouri that goes down in this little, they call it the boot heel down there, but it goes down in this little area into the South and that's where I'm from. And the fact I'm here in York, Pennsylvania is sort of based on a bad decision. We, we moved a thousand miles to help a friend at a church and he quit in two weeks after we got out of here and I realized like on day two, like I do not want to be here and fortunately or unfortunately, we didn't have enough money to go home. So that's how we wound up on the East Coast sort of away from everyone we knew. Um, but I'm here this morning and I go, that sort of bad decision um, I think was a God decision because that choose your own adventure moment probably changed our life bigger than any other sort of decision we could make. I'd still be in, you know, probably Cape Girardeau, Missouri, if it weren't for that. And um, now sometimes, sometimes, and we've talked a lot about this, so we won't kind of belabor this, but sometimes you, it's easy to tell that something's gonna be a bad decision, right? So if someone comes to you and goes, hey, would you like to join our suicide cult? No. Now, the problem is, I don't think they always call it a suicide cult, so you have to be careful. We'll have Kool-Aid later. Actually, I, I have to tell you this, the end of the service does not involve Kool-Aid, but you've probably heard that, right? Like, I drank the Kool-Aid or don't drink the Kool-Aid. This is, if you learn nothing else, you've learned something already, because do you know that they didn't, in Guyana, they didn't kill them with Kool-Aid? It was freaking cheap flavor aid. Seriously, that's the truth. You can check it out. Like, Google that stuff. Like, it was Flavor Aid, and somehow the poor Kool Aid man who only likes to, like, dress up and run through walls, like, he's blamed for that for all these years. And I would be sort of angry, just like if I'm going to end my life, that I have to end it with Flavor Aid, because every kid knows Flavor Aid's terrible, but that's another story. But sometimes, I don't know how I got off on that, but sometimes, like, it's easy to tell, like, that's a bad road to go down. But sometimes not so much. Now, I went down a bit of an internet rabbit hole this, this week in the Choose Your Own Adventure thing because I found like an abandoned Tumblr blog from 2005 that it's called, it's called You Chose Wrong. And it's literally nothing but bad endings from Choose Your Own Adventure books. It's hilarious. Here, here's an example right here. I like this. And so the, the instruction is if you choose to carry, you're in Treasure Diver, if you choose to carry the heavy box to the surface, turn to page 60. And, and literally it says a nitrogen bubble forms in one of your carotid arteries, cutting off the blood circulation. You go into convulsions and die. And then it's like they look for your partner and the search is fruitless. That's one of the endings from Treasure Diver. And you're like, I guess I shouldn't have stayed behind and carried the box, okay? And here's another one. This is from House of Danger. If you choose not to serve the aliens, it's like, no thanks, you say. We're not interested. You refuse, do you? Shout the man's. Well, we have another use for humans. In fact, it is our main use for humans. And with that, he takes out a small device from his pocket and aims at the three of you. A beam of incredibly cold life. It's temperature hundreds of degrees below zero. Bays you, Lisa, and Ricardo, and freezes 
all of you into solid blocks of ice. And the man takes out a rubber stamp from his other pocket and stamps you on the forehead. Human meat, galactic prime source, planet Earth, great A, the end. That's so apparently bad ending for that. Um, one more. This is from Lost Tribe. <laughs> I'm like thinking like of the nine-year-old who reads this, but it's funny. Um, you look neither left or right as you sprint from the house of gold and your choice was to escape from the temple, which seems like a good idea. Your mind is racing to perhaps this is the third test. Maybe you're supposed to run. Even if you don't get away, you'll still be able to barter with the Ariki for your freedom. You veer towards the gates. No, Hoipa yells from the doorway of the house of gold, but his warning comes too late. In the evening shadows, you never see the hardwood, I think it's a Taha, I don't know, with its tongue-shaped spearhead thrust with lightning speed by the chief warrior, and in the collar of green caca feathers flutters frivolously in the cool breeze as you sink to the ground. You'll never find out what the third tale really was because apparently you have a spear protruding from your chest. That's the end. Wow, um, so that, those were fun, but, but, but here's the thing. The great news to you this morning is if you're in that situation, and my point is you will be, sound like Yoda there for a moment, not cute little baby Yoda, but you will be. At some point, you and I are going to face a decision. And it's gonna be one of those decisions that whether we know it or not, whether we're prepared or not, whether we have uh, sort of, planned ahead or it just catches us one day sort of boom under the chin and you just have to make a choice. We all have to make a choice that is going to change our life forever. Now, the great news, and we talked about this on week one and I still can't get past this, is this idea that God allows us to make those choices. We're 100% authorized by our creator to make these life-changing choices, but then reminded like, as we saw from the books, not every choice you make ends up well for you. Or sometimes maybe you make a choice that you think, well, this will be fun for me and it destroys those around you in real life, right? Like you can make a choice that seems, in fact, scripture's filled, filled with examples of people who made choices that seemed good for them and, and harmed many people around them. And you know that if you've sort of lived on this planet very long of people who make choices and go, hey, this is great for me and then harms their family or the people they love. And so we can make our own choices, scripture says, but, but it's God that knows the right one. And so we have the ability to go to God, to go to the creator, as we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Man, I don't like walking through this life, I, I can't think of sort of a bigger advantage in the game of life when it comes to choosing your own adventure than to be able to interact with the creator. That's what prayer is. Like we can interact with the creator and go, what do you think we should do, right? Like, I mean, that, that's a pretty big deal. And because here's the thing, some things you don't get to choose because all of us would just choose to be the rock, right? Like, I mean, there'd be no better thing. Like, I, I'll just be the rock. If I get to choose my avatar, like everybody's gonna love me. I'll be giant and muscly and smoldery and whatever, it is. like rich, famous, whatever. Like you can't do any better than the rock. Like it's gonna be president. I'm predicting it right now. Uh, might not be bad, who knows? But, but I mean, you just can't get better than that like imagine like everybody would choose to be the rock or everybody would choose like just perfection everybody would choose the easiest path we could and here's the thing about life that's also true like there are choices that none of us would make I mean none of us would choose to suffer now maybe we would choose to go through like a little bit of a you know a painful warrior race weekend but none of us would choose a path that leads to real suffering we wouldn't choose illness we wouldn't choose loss. We wouldn't choose to lose a loved one. We wouldn't choose to even lose a pet. We, our pets would live forever if we could only choose the, the fun path. Um, now, here's the thing if you're a Christian this morning. If you're not a Christian, well, all of the stuff I said is true, um, but you could just say, well, that's just life or that's just, you know, chance or, hey, that's, that's just, you know, that's just how we evolved. But, but here's the thing that if you're a Christian, you sort of have to deal with because Jesus promised us that there would be some level of suffering for each of his followers. He said this, he said, I have told you all of this so that you would have peace in me. 
Here on earth, you will have many trials and many sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So if you're wondering, or if maybe you've watched a guy on TV that said, oh, no, 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 Jesus wants things to be perfect for you. That's not what Jesus said. Do I think that Jesus blesses us and God blesses? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, God can turn like the worst thing, like imagine like moving, like I said earlier, like I moved across the country with just basically enough money to get to the East Coast, expecting this new job that was gonna work out great. It didn't, so I had to find sort of other employment, which led me to take a job at this, you know, it was the first thing I could sort of find that paid well enough to pay the rent because rent, our rent basically more than doubled moving here from St. Charles to, to Baltimore, you know. It was just crazy how much it went up. I think we were paying like $1,100 our first month here and we had been paying five back in, it was just crazy. And so found something that would pay the bills, which turned out to be a renovation contract, which led me to start my company and learn the things I've learned. So it's like all of those things I believe. And the Bible says like God can use anything for good, but that doesn't mean there won't be suffering and pain and loss. And so um, I thought we'd talk about that part about the suffering part. That's fun, right? Aren't you glad you got up and came out on an icy morning? You're like, I could have stayed home, but, but, but you didn't, so you're stuck with me. But I thought we need to talk about suffering because it's the thing. Now, let me just preview next week. I'm excited my friend Matt is gonna come preach. Um, <laughs> and I don't wanna give too much away, but I will just tell you, if you've ever seen Matt and I together, together it's probably has made many people in Round the Clock Diner wonder because, <laughs> because um, I don't know if you know this, I'm white, I'm like pretty white. And when I paint stuff, I'm covered in white and I wear all white and Matt is not white. And he's always dressed super well because he's a preacher who has an insurance company, which is funny, like in many ways, we're so much alike. We both have businesses, we both have churches and we get along so well, but it, it literally looks like a negative image when we meet. And I, I love it because I know they're trying to figure out what we're doing. You know, <laughs> like we're like praying at a table in this well-dressed black band and this white guy who's wearing all white covered in white and it must freak people out. But he's gonna come talk to you next week about choosing an adventure. But this week, I thought I'd end up my part of this <laughs> about dealing with suffering because that's a real thing. In fact, it's a real thing in Action Church. I don't know why, um, but man, 2020, whoa, right? Like I've got so many texts and I, I was gonna tell you I got calls, that would be sort of a lie. Nobody really calls me anymore, but I had a period of the very first week of 2020 where I was like, oh, I don't even wanna answer my phone when it goes off because it was not good. Like and real life struggles, like, hey, I gotta have this surgery, or hey, I gotta, I, you know, my family's in trouble, or hey, I've got a loved one who's in this terrible situation, and, and hey, you know, and, and so I was getting these texts and these calls, and, 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 and it was, a, I'll just tell you just personally, like, it was all while I was painting, and I was like, I'm overwhelmed, like, I don't even know what to say, like, and I'm praying, and I'm going, but, but I really got a very strong, like, direction that I felt like and it was so helpful to me um, <laughs> and it doesn't sound helpful because it sounds like God's making fun of me but he can do that he, he's God but, but literally the, the thought that came into my mind after getting all of these different texts and calls and when it became clear that there was just going to sort of be problem after problem after problem coming through was they're not calling you they're not texting you Don because you're a great painter right? Like none of them are calling, Lord, I have a painting emergency. Like, cause I, the point was, I think God, what, was, what God was saying to me is none of these things are things that you can fix. Like you're not a surgeon. You're not even a f decent family counselor. You're not even a family. You don't, you don't know anything about anything. I didn't stop there. Of some things. Like I do know how to paint stuff, but I was like, you can't fix any of this crap. This is all terrible. They're calling you, they're texting you because they wanna hear from me. And you're sort of the point, like because of Action Church, like you're sort of the closest they can get to go, I need God right now. And so hopefully I text, hey, I'm praying for you. And I did, and I do pray for each of you. Um, but I realized that like, oh, these are, these are none, none of these things are things I can fix. But we do need to talk about them in these series. And I decided to do that because I'm like, 
the thing that is so tough about life, if you're in this choose your own adventure life, is there's stuff you're not going to choose. In fact, you would never choose. But what you do next is gonna change everything from then on. And so I wanna read something, and I've talked about this story before, but it's just the best thing that we can talk about because it's honestly, uh, thank you, Tyler, for this book cover. It's the worst choose your own adventure ever, and it's by Jesus. It's called You Are Born Blind. Like, nobody's buying that book. But listen to this from John 9.1. It says, as Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been born from birth. Rabbi, his disciples ask him, why was this man born, born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Now, those were the two choices that they had, right, in their culture. Like they would say, is it because their culture decided at that time that if you were blind, if you were crippled, um, it was either your parents were being punished um, or it was because you had done something bad. And so they had a little bit of a question to Jesus. They're like, Jesus, you're a smart rabbi. You're a great teacher. Can you help us out with this problem? And notice their only two choices were, did this guy choose to be blind by something he did or were his parents being punished for something they did? Now, here's the thing I realized. Like, you and I probably would not say that today. Like, we're so much nicer and better than that. But I will guarantee you we wouldn't have picked what Jesus said. Like maybe we would have some modern version of that, postmodern version. We would go, oh, this was caused by evolution or environmental problems, or maybe there's a corporation to blame. We might go, hey, what if, what if, what if his mom, you know, she probably was exposed to some chemical that caused this, or because we can't accept for a moment that some child is so sort of, oh, it's so terrible to think of a child being born blind. We can't accept for a minute it would just happen. And so we would try to figure out who was to blame also, right? Like we would think, is it, you know, was it environmental? Was it a problem with the chromosome? Was it because, you know, her parent didn't have good genetics? Or we would, we would find a solution. We would try to find someone to blame. We wouldn't probably blame the baby and we probably wouldn't blame the parents. But, oh, we'd find somebody to blame and Jesus would disagree with all of us, right? Like even if we didn't choose this because here's sort of what they were saying. They were like, I think, and some of them were probably going, I think it was because his parents and some of them were like, oh, I think it's because, you know, he probably was sinful somehow. I don't know how you sin before you're even born, but that's what they thought. Um, and here's what Jesus said. And, and I've said this before, but it's still shocking. Jesus said, oh no, it was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. And then he says this, and even though we're so much more advanced and we're so much more evolved and we're so much more <laughs> progressive and nice and like we would never say anything like that like, his answer still is shocking to us today because he said this happened. This poor guy was born blind so that the power of God could be seen in him. He's going, oh, no, no, no. See, you don't understand. Like this happened so that I could get credit. <laughs> That's not super comfortable today, is it? Like none of us like to think of it like that. Now, I brought that up because I want you to think of it from a completely sort of different uh, viewpoint because it sounds terrible when you think of it like that. Oh, no, 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 this, this, this guy, he never, he never saw light. He doesn't know what his mom looks like. He doesn't know. And, and think about like today, if someone was born blind, um, there'd be many things we could do to make their life more comfortable at least. You know, this is before Braille. This is before like books on your phone, like this is before, like you could be, you could learn sign language. This is before any of that. In fact, your only choice, this man was begging by the side of the road. Like if you're born blind, you're just sort of off the island and you have to like live on scraps that people throw your direction. And Jesus said, guess what? All that happened to that guy so that God would be glorified. And that's not super satisfying to us still today, is it? Um, it seems pretty, but, but, but I want you to think of it this way. What Jesus was saying really, <laughs> and what we know if we ever read the Choose Your Own Adventure books as a child or read them to our kids is that good authors, they don't write stories about comfortable, happy little characters, do they? Right? 
choose your own adventure books aren't really that concerned with the uh, comfort of their characters. Like all, think about, think about the choices that we just read earlier from that vlog, like that maybe we've forgotten about, like, oh, like you're shipwrecked or you're a treasure diver and you have to make this choice whether you sort of live or die and you don't know how it's gonna turn. And, and so if everything turned out well for the characters in the book, it would be predictable and quite honestly, they would have sold like three copies and we wouldn't even know anything about the series. But instead, they made life very difficult for the characters, right? Like they've got terrible choices and terrible hardship. And hey, you know, like you're a prisoner of the ant people. That's how the book starts. That sounds terrible to me. I don't want to be prisoner of the ant people. But like that's what Jesus was saying. He's like, oh, no, no, no. You don't understand. Like my father, the creator, he's writing a story here. And you just wait till you see how this turns out because it's going to be awesome. So this is what happens next. You might know this story, you probably do. It says, then he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. And he told them, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. And Siloam means sent. So the man went and he washed and he came back seeing. Now, I almost hope you've never heard that story, but I think most of you have, or at least some of you have because it's really better if you've never heard the story, right? Because we go, oh, this is the one about Jesus healing the blind man. That's how we title the story. You know, like, oh, 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 the story of Jesus healing the blind man. No, 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 no. This is a story about a guy born blind, living off scraps, like living in agony and suffering, and then some crazy guy that he can't see comes up to him and says, and Jesus did this over and over and over and over. He would say this to people who were suffering, people who were sick, people who had a dead child. He'd go, do you want to be healed or do you want your sins forgiven? He always gave them the option of going, no, I'm good. Like, if you think about it, it makes no sense because you and I would be like, well, of course you would say yes. I don't know, would you? Like, you're, you gotta put yourself really into this adventure and go, here's a guy I don't know. I've heard, he'd probably heard of Jesus. He knew Jesus was famous. He knew Jesus had this big following now. Um, but he spits on the ground and makes spit mud, which is spud. I don't even know what to call that. Like spit mud and puts it on his eye. <laughs> That's the real story, right? Like imagine, put yourself in there like you're blind. And then he says, you know, and you don't feel anything, like nothing changes. You're still blind and you have spit mud on your face, right? Like that's all that's happened. And then he says, go wash at the pool of Siloam. So I don't even know how the guy got there. Like he's got to get there somehow. So he has to literally take this short journey. We don't know how far away it was. It was in the town, but he has to leave the place he knows and go to a specific place and wash himself. And then it says the man comes back seeing. And that's the end of the story. And that's the great part. We're like, yeah, Jesus healed the, but, but, but think about that part. That's just weird, right? <laughs> right? Like that doesn't make any sense. And it's funny because Jesus, I believe, purposely healed people in different ways. Like sometimes he would lay his hands on them. Sometimes he would just pray for them. Sometimes he would spit on them apparently and put mud on them, but he didn't do it the same way over and over. And I think that's a good thing because otherwise, like if you, you needed like contacts, we would be spitting and making mud and putting on your eyes. Well, that's how you do it. But that's not what Jesus point at all, right? Um, see, here, here's the thing. You and I would never choose suffering. And it's not our choice anyway. Like, this guy never chose to be born blind. He didn't choose to deal with that. But we do choose what comes next. That's where the choice comes in. In fact, Paul, Paul famously, the Apostle Paul who prayed 
Now, speaking of healing, Paul had some sort of problem. We don't know what it was. He called it a thorn in the flesh, which sounds all quaint, like, oh, a thorn in the flesh, no big deal, it, which isn't fun if you've actually had a thorn in your flesh. I have, because I grew up in Missouri, and they had these acacia trees that had thorns like this long, and we never wore shoes because we were rednecks, and you would literally poke one of those into your foot. You would step foots. You would step on one of those with your feet, and it would break off, and it would fester for like a long, it was very satisfied, Dr. Pimple Pop or would have loved getting it out of there. But you would be like digging in your foot. My mom was a nurse and we were poor. So she would like dig in your foot or more likely you wouldn't tell her because she, she was like a Civil War surgeon. Like she was gonna cut your foot off and like shake it out and then sew it back on. Mom was rough. And so you would walk around, you know, limping with that thorn and it was terrible. And that's what Paul said. And we don't know, some people said he was blind or losing his sight because he would say, look how big the, the signature is that I'm writing. We, we don't know, something painful, something horrible. And he prayed three times, God, take this away. It would help me if I took this away because I'd be able to serve you better. And Paul said, God said, no can, not no can do, <laughs> that would be wrong. No, I'm not. It would be better if he said, I can't. He said, I'm not. You're gonna have to deal with this. And so this is that guy dealing with that situation, not getting spit mud and getting healed. He said, not only so, but we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. See, here's what Paul said. He said, choosing to get, trust God when you're suffering gave two possibilities. It was possible, and it's still possible, that God will heal you. Like God, when you give that thing to him, God can heal you. Or he will change you. And in both cases, if you notice what the Apostle Paul said and what Jesus said about this guy who was born blind is really what we're trying to do. You know, we think, well, you know, Don, you don't understand what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm trying to get not sick or not suffering or not in pain or not deal with this loss or not. You go, no, 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 no. That's, I get that because that's the way we all of us feel. But what Jesus would say is, oh, no, no, no. Like, you're part of this amazing story. And I could use your story to like inspire everybody around you. In fact, we're inspired thousands of years later because of this faceless blind man that we would never, we don't even know his name, but we know that change inspires us today. And Jesus said, that's the point. The point is writing an amazing story with your life. And so when we give our situation to Jesus and say, okay, you're the author, I'm not. You take it and do what you will with us and we trust him with it. Like that guy had to trust Jesus. Like he could have just walked away with dirty eyes or he could have just stayed there with dirty eyes and I guarantee you he would not be healed. But he had to do what Jesus said. So here's what I thought we'd do this morning. In fact, I don't know what we're gonna do this morning. This is a choose your own adventure moment. Here's what the Bible says. I'm just gonna read it. This is James, the brother of Jesus. He said, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, or she, I believe this is equal opportunity, not just dude sin, although we're good at it. He will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So here's your choice this morning. I don't know how this is gonna end. That's what scripture says, like if you're in that situation and you're suffering this morning, you could choose and like the blind man, it's gonna be weird. Like there's no non-weird way to do this. In fact, oh my goodness, I, I thought about it and my thought was like, well, if people wanna be prayed for, I'll just pray for them. But then I thought, oh no, Don, it says you're supposed to anoint them with oil. And I'm like, that makes me really uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, well, 
I don't really have to do that part. And I'm like, no, I think that's for me because I'm uncomfortable with that part because I've been to a lot of Pentecostal stuff and I'm like, mm, it's going to get weird in here if we do that. And so <laughs> I want you to know, I actually went to the kitchen and I got some canola oil. That's what that is, which is fat free, not fat free. It's, um, it's uh, trans fat free. Um, and I believe it is the most essential of the oils. Actually, it's funny because I, I purposely, I was like, I ought to go get olive oil. And I'm like, no, someone might think the oil is doing it. I know people really like essential oils. This is literally canola oil from the kitchen. So there's no chance this oil will help you. But, 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 as weird as it sounds like, if you wish, and we're not gonna belabor this, like if you would like to be prayed over this morning and you're suffering or you're sick or you just go, hey, I need to invite God into that, Bill and Denise and Michelle and I will pray for you this morning. We'll put a little oil, on, canola oil on your forehead and we will pray for you old school because I think that it could be that someone God wants to heal to show his glory. Now, it might be, and I want you not to come up here if you go, oh, well, I want that because that's not guaranteed. When you ask for prayer, you're going, hey, and this is what I'm gonna pray for you and what Bill and Denise and Michelle would pray for you is, hey, God, your will be done. Do whatever it takes to bring the most glory. Either change them where this is an amazing story later or heal them and we'll give you the glory either way and we won't trust in canola oil because that's what could happen. Or I have something else to read to you that's probably inspiring for everyone, your choice. If you'd like to be, if you'd like to be prayed for today, come up here. I'm gonna give you like a minute. We're not gonna, we're not gonna fool around. So if you'd like to be prayed for, just come up here and we will, we will pray for you today. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you for, that, for those words and that song. And here's one thing I know about services like this. Um, number one, it's kind of like a party and you go, hey, we had this party. We ought to do it next week the same way. It's never the same again. Um, so I don't know if you ever see anything like that at Action Church, but I'm glad you were here on this wintry day to be part of it. But I also know something else. I know that afterwards, like the next thing that happens as you drive out of the parking lot, as you say, ah, maybe something didn't happen. You know, maybe we all got caught up in... <laughs> Don's amazing pitch for canola oil. I doubt it because I'm terrible at this. But here's the thing I know. Something did happen. Like together, we took a step of faith. We, we stepped outside of like our comfort, just like that blind man did. And we took a step to go, God, be involved. And I want to feel your power in my life. And not only just the guys that stepped up here, but as a church, we were doing that. And so... I pray that you'll be part of it next week, but also that you'll just share your story um, and that we can live this out together because I know that faith always changes things. And so I just want to pray with you and we'll go out into the week, but I'd love to uh, hear what happens next because I know something does. Um, dear God, we, uh, we don't know much about how you work. Um, we're thankful for the Bible. We're thankful for the Holy Spirit that guides us but we fully admit we don't know um, your ways. But God, we do know that you reward faith, putting our trust in your power and not in our own. And God, there's so many people here who have done that this morning that have stepped out and put their trust in you. And God, I know that they won't be disappointed. And so God, we just pray for our brothers and sisters. We know that sort of the, the enemy will come against them and sort of try to cause them to, to forget or doubt. But God, I know that you are stronger than that. And so we don't even worry about that because we know that you're in charge. And God, we're just thankful for the miracles that have happened today. We don't deserve them, but we will at least give you all the credit. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks so much for coming out to Action Church today.